Hi, it's Music Art Geek here, and today I'm doing a quick review on the Grayscale Permutation. This is a pretty cool module. It's based on Tom Whitwell's famous Turing machine design, which is based on other things before that by Buchla and, and other companies. But Tom's design really took off in the Eurorack world. A lot of people have them in their modules. Some people really have them as kind of cornerstone of their module. And the permutation builds on that by basically giving you a, a Turing machine Mark II with a pulses expander, more or less, some ways more, some ways less, but also some interesting uh, modulation inputs that don't exist on the earlier iterations of the Turing machine. So all in all, I think it's a great module. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so now the permutation is mounted in the rack and I've got a little patch going here with lots of inputs and outputs happening. What you're hearing right now is the Turing machine. The sequencer output is driving the main melody. The variance expander, the voltage expander, is driving the bass line. And I'm using the inversion of the variance expander output to adjust the brightness of the lead line that you're hearing. I'm using these four individual gates out, or five individual gates out, to go into a logic module to provide this high snare hit that's gating here ever so often in kind of unpredictable ways because it's kind of complicated, uh, which makes it fun. This is the clock input coming from a QCD uh, by way of a grids, originally from a grids into the QCD. Got a bit of a swing on it. And finally, this shift input is controlling the uh, locking or looping versus random mode right now. And right now, we're locked. And you'll hear in about one or two bars that it's going to change again because there's going to be a gate coming in here just for about two seconds that allows it to randomize again. Just randomized again and locked back down. Okay. So one of the cool things to do with this kind of stuff too is I, I like use this often as kind of a bed to groove on. So it's a lot of fun to do this, uh, and the Turing machine makes all this possible and a lot more. So let's break down a little bit what's happening with this patch. I'm going to take the uh, grids out, which is a, a drum sequencer from Mutable. It's making the main groove. So there's what you're hearing now is only the permutation module. And the, uh, the first thing you're hearing is the melody coming out of the sequence output. This sequence output is going into a quantizer. The one I'm using is the ornament and crime. Uh, there, we just randomized for a second there. We're coming back down to a lock. It's, it's locked back down again. I'm also using the uh, voltages or variant expander. It used to be called the original Music Things modular one is called voltages. This is a variation on that. I'm using that to drive this bass line. Uh, hang on, which is here. So that's the bass line. That's coming from a plonk module. And this is a little drum sound coming from uh, Erica Pico drums. This is coming by way of uh, some of these gate outputs. Four of these gate outputs are going into a logic module here, the plug from IntelliGel, and giving me one output, which is uh, kind of unpredictably, it locks down, but it's unpredictable where it will be. Uh, it's sort of intentionally complicated to make that kind of unpredictable. And then of course, this is the grid's drum machine, which is just synchronized with everything coming in. For a long time, I've used Turing machines and understood how they behaved, but I didn't exactly understand how they worked. Uh, I think I have a better understanding of that now, and I'll offer an explanation. 
the Turing machine is a binary shift register. That alone can be a little confusing because the shift registers that we use in synthesizers are often analog shift registers. For example, the copier machine in the copier machine app in the Ornament and Crime, if you've used that, then you've used an analog shift register where it takes a control voltage that can vary or that you can input and moves it along different steps. The uh, Turing machine, or the permutation in this case, is really actually simpler than that. It doesn't take a control voltage, it just takes a bit and moves it along this 16-bit uh, shift register. I've got it set to 8 bits right now just to keep it simple. So there's a little display here. This is these first 8 bars of this display, it's called the genome display, display the contents of the shift register. So the first step right now is positive, the second step is 0, uh, then they're lit up 111, and then zero. So that's eight steps altogether. The ninth bar here is just a blank step that's used as a visual display, a visual separator. And then the last bar, it lights up when a gate signal goes in. So I'm going to send a gate signal in now and you'll see that bar light up. There it goes. So I'm just doing that manually, tapping my finger on a, a, a sensor. So what's happening right now is um, if we skip through the shift register here, I'm triggering from this first gate output, it's triggering a snare drum. So what you're seeing is trigger coming from what the status of that first bar is. If it lights up, you'll hear a snare drum. If it doesn't, you won't. There's a blank. There's a snare drum. Okay, so we've got those five, that group of five bars has gone through the shift register. It's at the, the last bar of it is at the um, last step, at step number eight. So that means it's going to wrap around, because I'm locked down right now, it's going to wrap around and reappear here at number one. So it should be lit up if I press a gate now. And there it is. So that's how a shift register works. It just sends this signal down, uh, down the pathway and loops it back at the beginning. Now, how do we decide which is going to be a zero or a one? And that's one of the really cool things about Tom Whitwell's Turing machine design, is that between the eighth step and back to the first step, there's a chance of a coin toss. And that coin toss introduces randomness into the sequence. So, right now we're locked down. If I take it to 12 noon, every step will be uh, potentially random. So let's have a look. So it's coming in randomly, changing all the time. I can split the difference here. Let's make it kind of random. So I want you to lock down, but maybe introduce some randomness every other step or two. So that group of three is stuck together. They're still there, that group of three. Ah, it's broken up now. And then finally, if I lock it down, we keep repeating. Now we can change that all the way up to 16 steps long, and if you uh, go, take your lockdown or your uh, random versus looping knob past noon, it actually does a, an inversion of the shift register to extend the length. It's not actually a musical inversion, which is a little confusing. It's a binary inversion, so the results are less predictable than what a musical inversion would be. But the upshot is that it extends your length to double what's here on the steps knob, which would be called bits and permutation. Uh, so if you're at 16 steps and you have this all the way left, you'll go to 32 steps. So, that's great. We figured out how we get gates. Oh, interestingly, by the way, the 8-bar uh, display here is exactly like the 8 uh, first steps of these gate outs. Uh, this model of the permutation, the biggest of the three, has a, a lit-up gate for all 16 steps of the shift register. So what you see in this bar is mirrored by those lights by the jacks. It's telling you when, when a gate is coming out one of those jacks. So that's great. That's how we get gates. Now, how do we get control voltages? This is what I found so confusing. A bit is either on or off. It's not a C sharp or a G major or whatever, or a, a, a musical note or some analog uh, step in between. It's either on or off. How would you get a control voltage out of this? So the way uh, that Tom Whitwell did it is he took the first eight steps of the shift register, whether it's set to 16 or not, doesn't matter. He uses the first eight steps of the shift register and uses those as a byte. And if you know your binary math with a byte, the first step is one, on or off. The second step is two, four, eight, 
16, 32, 64, or 128. The upshot is that you can have 256 different steps that can be derived from the eight bits of the shift register. So that's a really cool thing to do. There, with some scaling and some other stuff, they are uh, able to get at higher resolution than 256 steps. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but apparently I think it's the equivalent of 4,096. So uh, that's how you get a CV out. So we've just been listening to uh, gates hitting a snare drum. So let's take that, we'll keep that gate coming out, but instead of hitting a snare drum now, I'm gonna send it to the gate input of a rings module. And I'm just going to take the output of my logic here and put it back into the drum. So now we're going to hear rings stepping through and providing those CVs. So let me lock this down. So now we're getting CVs and gates. The gate is coming again from the first step of the shift register. The CV is coming out of this sequence output here. There's also um, an invert, inverted sequence output, a noise output. Uh, there is a noise generator used internally to provide the random switching. And this is just a repeat of the clock input. This is uh, the clock input down here. Uh, it reappears as an output here just as a convenience. The voltage expander does something different. It's interesting. It takes this, the same eight bits of the shift register and decides whether any of these eight pots will be active. These eight pots are actually just gates. So they're all high voltages and you decide which one I want more of and which one I want less of. You scale it here. And the upshot is that you get a different uh, set of control voltages coming out of here that also locks down, that's also random, but it's different from the main one. One of the reasons that Whitwell did this is because of binary math and because of the way it derives the control voltages from the shift register, it tended to produce descending patterns, uh, which isn't random. It's I, I suppose these are pseudo-random devices in, in, any, in any event, but there was kind of a noticeable uh, a phenomenon with the Turing machine out of the main output that it often... Uh, produces these descending patterns and I have to, I believe that has something to do with the fact that the bits are weighted towards one side. What he did with the voltages expander is in part to address that. So you are here are setting the, the, the value of the, rather than these be 2, 4, 6, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, you're setting the value of them. And that gives you a very different output. And the voltages or variant expander, I should say, has uh, a positive and a negative output. And I was using both of those in the patch that you heard earlier. So let's now get this into a clock rather than a manual clock and fire it up our clock in here. So you're hearing the main sequence output and you're hearing also hearing a snare drum. That snare drum is coming from an interesting use of the gates. I've taken two of the 16 steps of the full shift register. I've taken four of them and put a pair into the first uh, logic uh, gate in plug and another pair into the second one. And the upshot is that I now get this kind of unpredictable uh, but lockable uh, gate signal coming out related to the pattern. So if I unlock the pattern here a little. So you can hear now the snares coming in a completely different place. And we've also changed obviously the CV output as well. And here's what's coming out of the voltages expander. So I've limited this with the Turing machine to just uh, a, a fifth, a, a root note and a, and a fifth above it. And I can expand the range now. I'm changing the range of that so you'll start to hear more high notes. Anyway, I'll take it back down here into the bass territory. Bring the rings back. Bring a drum machine in with... Maybe we'll speed that up a little. So that's the uh, the Turing machine. Differences between uh, the permutation, sorry, I keep calling it a Turing machine because that's what it is, but differences between the permutation and a typical Turing machine, let me just give you a couple of those. 
are uh, the normal Turing machine gives you a CV input, a CV input control of the locking random knob. You have that here, it's called the shift control. Um, but in addition, you have a CV control of the level, which is very useful. So you can control that with a CV. You have um, CV control of the length or bits or steps, you might want to call it. Um, you have gate inputs for clear and write. Clear and write is kind of like a manual override. You can empty steps in the uh, shift register by holding down clear. And then I can hold down write and force it to write a step. So it's written two steps there because I held it down for two clocks. And then I can clear those out if I want. Again, I am locked. I can do this while it's random if I want to. So I'm clearing. But they're changing those steps because now I've unlocked the uh, the Turing machine. The other difference that you get uh, between this and the Music Things Turing machine plus Pulses Expander plus uh, voltages expander. One of the things you don't get is you don't get logic outputs. One reason why I'm using the plug is that the original pulses expander has interesting uh, pair of AND gates where you have to have, for example, gate 1 and 4 fire at the same time and then it will release a, a gate. Those are missing from this. On the other hand, you get all 16 steps of the shift register which you don't get uh, with the pulses expander. And the voltage expander on the uh, voltage expander from music things you get rather than a scale knob on the negative output you get an offset uh, which allows the negative uh, inverted output of the voltage expander to go back up into the positive range if that's useful to you. On the other hand you also get level controls or VCAs for both the positive and negative outputs of the voltage expander those inputs there and that that does not exist on the voltage expander. So that's about it. I think Grayscale have done a really good job on building on the work of Tom Whitwell and producing a really stable, uh, fully featured, kind of state-of-the-art touring machine.